Good afternoon and welcome to MF Corner. I'm Sumera Abdi. Well, today we're going to first talk about the second tranche of the Bharat bond ETF. They've seen a good, successful first tranche. And now the second tranche will come to you on the 14th of July. You can subscribe to it up to the 17th. Radhika Gupta, MD and CEO of Edelweiss AMC joins us first up. And a little later on the show, we're going to talk about the stamp duty, which will be levied on all transactions related to mutual funds from tomorrow. Amit Bivalkar of Sapient Wealth Management will be with us in just a bit. But first, let's talk about the Bharat Bond ETF series to Radhika Gupta joins in now. Hi, Radhika. So double cheer from your end. First, your elevation as MD and CEO. Congratulations. And then there is the second tranche of the Bharat Bond ETF. Tell us what can we expect this time around? Okay, we'll just try and reconnect with Radhika in just a bit, but let me just take you through what's on offer on the Bharat Bond ETF Series 2. Um, as always, uh, as we saw in the first part, there are two maturities. Uh, one is, of course, five years. The second is 11 years. The five-year one is, uh, has a maturity in April 2025. Uh, the underlying index yield over there is 6.04%, which has the benefit of six indexations. The second maturity, which is 11 years, that uh, uh, matures in April 2031. The underlying index yield there is 7.04% and it'll have the benefit of 12 indexations. So Radhika is back with us. Radhika, tell us what can we expect? It's a, uh, entirely 100% AAA portfolio. You expect that uh, the debt sentiment, which has been battered by events of the recent past, will still find takers in the security of the Bharat Bond ETF? So hi, Sumera. Very uh, happy to be here. And uh, no, as you said, I think uh, we are excited to launch the second tranche of Bharat Bond uh, ETF at this time. In fact, I think we've pre-pawned the launch a little bit. We're coming soon after the first launch. And I think it's primarily sentiment-driven indicators because given what has happened in the credit environment, we do think people are looking for safety and liquidity in their debt investments. And Bharat Bond ETF has offered that. So at least the reaction we're getting from both retail and institutional investors on the road shows has been very, very positive so far. Uh, one of the interesting things that you mentioned is that, you know, when we launched the program, we said Bharat Bond is not one launch, it's a program and we want to have a series of these products. So our 2023 and 2030 are already in the market. We thought we'd launch a 2025 because you don't have too many five-year products in the mutual fund space. And then we're also coming up with the 2031. So in particular, the five-year product, I think, is attracting a lot of attention today because there are not too many competitor products. Uh, it's also a time when I think interest rates in the five and 10-year segment are still relatively attractive compared to the shorter end where interest rates have fallen. And yes, the constitution remains the same. AAA public sector bonds. So that hasn't changed. So I think we expect to see a very, very healthy participation in this, especially because the product is known now. Last time was a little bit of a quick launch. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I, I take your point that, uh, uh, you know, the product is known, the safety factor is there. Um, the yields are a little bit lower this time around. You think that might be a bit of a deterrent or is it just uh, the overall environment? I think the yields are lower than last time. I mean, they're 1% lower uh, than last time on the shorter end uh, and a little bit on the longer end. But uh, look at it from this point of view, interest rates have fallen. And if you look at the spread, I mean, most of the investment and flows that you see into funds is in the three-year segment. Those yields are at about 52 If the 2025, which is a five-year product, is at close to 56 to 5.8, maybe closer to 6%, depending on when yields play out. I think that's a substantial spread retail investors have over the three year. And in the 10 year segment, we still think that the spreads are very attractive. Uh, the 10 year segment over the last six to 12 months, AAA yields have been very high compared to GSEC yields. They've been at a spread of about 80 to 100 points, which is actually their historical high. So given the other options in the market, I, I think yield levels are good. And I think on a post tax basis, yield levels are also very attractive, which you talked about you know, at the beginning of the show. Um, Radhika, um, you know, what have been the learnings from the first tranche and especially in terms of, uh, you know, improving the secondary liquidity? 
Um, how are you hoping things might be different this time around? So I think uh, liquidity was a big question when the first tranche came in and uh, we had appointed three market makers to take care of liquidity. We've actually been very happy with the liquidity experience. Let me share some stats that may not be in the public domain as yet. Uh, in both the tranches, uh, the daily trading volume is somewhere between three and five crores each. On some days, the total trading volume is as high as 20 to 25 crores. In comparable products like GSEC, ETFs, etc., the liquidity is actually much, much lower. It's in lakhs. So trading volumes have been reasonable. The average bid-ask spread, Sumaira, has been between 5 to 10 basis points. In our time, you know, March, April, May, when debt market liquidity has been challenged. And I think what has been most heartening for us is that we have processed single day subscriptions and single day redemptions as large as 500 crores very comfortably despite shortened debt market hours. So the learning I think has been that market makers work uh, as a practice and we want to keep working with market makers. We're going to work with the same and maybe other market makers. That really has worked. The idea of getting retail investors on the exchange and only having large investors come to the EMC has also created some amount of liquidity on the exchange. So we are going to continue that structure as well. The third learning, I think, from an investor point of view is that the fund of funds vehicle has been very popular. We've all debated whether ETFs are going to really take off. But I think the fund of fund vehicles was launched at about 500 crores. It's grown four times in size. So a lot of mutual fund investors who don't want to do ETF have chosen to do the fund of funds vehicle. So that is also going to be launched in parallel. So those have been the liquidity learnings coming into this issue. And of course, AAA as a segment continues to be the choice. Hmm. Okay, um, now, you know, so once uh, this launch, the second launch is done, uh, so you'll have four maturities, right? And now there are people uh, who are looking to sort of, uh, you know, ladder up these maturities. Do you expect that the next set of uh, launches will be quicker or are you still going with twice a year? So there is no defined timeline on set of launches. I mean, the, the hope is in the next three, four years, you build out the complete ladder from 23 all the way till 30 so that investors really have products in the one to 10 year range. Uh, and different investors have different kind of product needs. Uh, I expect that we could have a launch in uh, the December, January season uh, around the shorter end of the curve, maybe a three year kind of product, but it's early to say. We also have debated, Sumaira, having a very long term product, something like a 12 to 15 year product. So that's been a discussion we've had with government. I mean, one of the very interesting things we've seen in Bharat Bond is that if you look at the size of the current series, and that's a good indication, they started at about 12,000 crores in the NFO. We're sitting at 14 today, but the long term one, which is the 2030 is actually about 9,500 crores. Now in India, you don't see large amounts of money in long term debt mutual funds. I mean, 60-70% of the debt mutual fund AUM we have is typically under one, two years. So I think there is an interest in also building out longer term structures, which you haven't seen so far, and encouraging a longer term debt investing framework. So whether it's twice a year or thrice a year or basis market need, uh, I don't know, but the idea is definitely to fill the yield curve and especially explore things on the long end. Okay, so you remain confident then, uh, Radhika, that because of the nature of the product itself, uh, the weak sentiment of the, uh, you know, the current debt market is not going to rub off. You're still going to be able uh, to attract those, uh, uh, the bank FD money coming into the second tranche. And also, what's the next innovation after this? What's the next innovation after this is hard to tell, I would say. Um, but I think the idea is not to mess with something that is working in terms of the Bharat Bond program. Um, I think we had thought that, you know, we'll uh, keep to AAA and just make sure that liquidity conditions remain intact. Bharat Bond is also a journey of getting retail participation in. So while the first tranche did well, I think the hope with this series is to honestly widen the number of investors, widen the number of 
of distribution partners. I think if we can do that in this series, that will be much more successful because people who've invested in the first one have had a healthy experience. That base needs to widen a lot more. I mean, ultimately, we're two crore investors as a mutual fund industry, uh, much larger opportunity. So I think the idea is not to necessarily innovate too much with a structure that is working, but widen the reach substantially. So that's what we're hoping to do. And obviously, it's not easy to do a large eight to 10,000 crore NFO in a lockdown. So this is the digital is going to be a big innovation in this one. The last NFO involved a lot of physical road shows. I mean, lots of trips here, there. This time, the digital launch is on Friday, and digital is really going to be the big innovation. All right, Radhika, all the very best to you and your team uh, for the second launch. So guys, mark your calendars. 14th to the 17th of July is the offer period for the second series of the Bharat Bond ETF. Thanks, Radhika, for your time once again. A quick Thank break you. on the other side. Uh, we're going to shift gears. One, of course, is uh, we'll get an opinion on what a retail investor should do if they're looking to invest in the Bharat Bond ETF. Should they subscribe or not? And we'll also talk about the stamp duty on mutual funds, which will be levied from tomorrow. What does that mean for you? All of that lined up next with Amit Vivalkar of Sapient Wealth Management.